Through the blood of Jesus, all my sins are forgiven. The blood of Jesus cleanses me continually from all sin. Through the blood of Jesus, I am justified, made righteous, just as if I'd never sinned. Through the blood of Jesus, I am sanctified, made holy, set apart to God. My body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, redeemed, cleansed, sanctified by the blood of Jesus. Therefore, Satan has no place in me, no power over me through the blood of Jesus. I renounce him. I loose myself from him and I command him to leave me in the name of Jesus. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to God's Feed Ministry Bible Study on this Tuesday night. We are so glad to have each and every one of you joining us here tonight as we continue this Bible study of preparing to meet the King. As we've been talking about, we, the church, the believers, the body of Christ, are the bride of Christ. And he's coming back for a bride that is without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. A glorious bride. Someone who has put herself ready, made herself ready to meet the bridegroom. And for us, that is our King Jesus. And I know that we are in the middle of Holy Week here this week, just having come uh, through Palm Sunday and preparing for all of the ways that Jesus Christ died to make us redeemed and how appropriate it, that we are talking tonight about the blood of Jesus Christ, that the life is in the blood, there is power in the blood of Jesus. And tonight we want to thank you for being here and being part of this. So tonight we, Amen. again, we want to thank you for joining us. We pray that you are blessed by all of this. And we want you to tell your friends. We want you to share this video so that they too can get in on the knowledge because it is the word of God as we saw two weeks ago as we talked about the weapons of our warfare and as we prepare to meet our king. We talked about that. But tonight it is all about the blood of Jesus. And when you share this with your friends, we want you to be a participant with us. You are not a spectator. There's no spectators in the kingdom of God. Can I get an amen from our chaplains in the room tonight? Amen. So uh, we are so glad to have each and every one of you here with us. And we want to hear your comments. We want to hear your questions. Share your scripture with us. And make sure that you participate with us. So tonight... I want to welcome you to the Bible study, and I want to introduce our panel with us tonight. We have Jerry Glacier with us from Sarasota, Sarasota, Florida, Navasota. <laughs> I'm closer to Sarasota than I am Navasota, but from Navasota, Texas, we have Jerry Blazier. Jerry, say hello. Evening, folks. <laughs> and then also from Polk, Ohio, we have Mike Emhoff with us. Mike? Hi, glad to see you. And tonight, also with us, we have our newest employee with Godspeed Ministry, and we are so proud to introduce you to Harrison Burnett. And this young man you will be seeing on Tuesday evenings. He is coming on board as our media coordinator and helping us do ministry. And Harrison, if you want to take, I didn't set you up for this, but if you will just Take a moment and introduce yourself to folks. Yeah, I'd love to. Thanks, Renee. Um, I'm Harrison Burnett. Uh, primarily, I'm a full-time college student at the community college uh, in Shelby, North Carolina. Um, I'm pursuing uh, a, a, a diploma in uh, broadcast technology. I graduated at the end of the spring. Um, I'm also a worship leader at First Baptist Church in Shelby. Um, I've been doing that for about a year and a half now. Uh, this fall, I'm going to Columbia International University in South Carolina to pursue a degree in music and worship arts. So uh, really excited to be joining the team here and be with you guys and 
um, get to serve. So thanks for having me. Yeah. Well, Amen. I'm, Congratulations. I'm surprised Harrison did not mention that he's also a musician, singer, songwriter. And he actually has songs out there streaming on the platforms. He knows more about that than what I do. <laughs> but I've listened to some of his music. And this young man has a heart for God. And one thing he, uh, or if you said it, I missed it, that he also plans to go on to seminary. Is that what you've, yes, after you yes. get your degree at Columbia International? So this is, this is the future of Amen. God's people. And we are so glad to have Harrison as part of the Godspeed ministry team and just praise God for that answer to prayer. As always, we love to kick it off with prayer. We always want God and his Holy Spirit to come and be part of everything we do. We are strong believers that we don't move unless the Holy Spirit gives us unction. So I'm going to ask Jerry if he would be so kind as to lead us in our opening prayer tonight. Sure. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Lord and precious Heavenly Father, help us to understand the uh, how the blood of the Christ affects us and how it covers us and how it uh, adorns us and how we can apply it to our lives so that the enemy is set in his place so that we can understand how the blood really works in us and through us so that we can have a, a better walk with you. Well, we pray for those that are here with us tonight those that are online, uh, those that are on Facebook, God, we ask that you would bless them, to watch over them, to protect them, to put a hedge around them, Lord, so the enemy cannot get to them, Lord, and be sh uh, sh uh, shored up so that their walk can be productive in Christ. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jerry. We appreciate the opening prayer. And I want to go back and just welcome all of you on Facebook. I see that Greg Parker and all of the watch parties here. Good to have you guys with us. Gary Bingham, uh, Joe uh, Hamrick is here. Um, I'm just trying to look at all the different people that Greg Parker, Craig Garland. Hey, Craig Garland. Glad to have you with us. And uh, it's just wonderful to have each and every one of you guys here with us as we do this Bible study. And again, let me remind you, you're not spectators, you're participators. So be sure that you add your comments and voices in there. And I believe Steve Longmire is coming in to join us, which is amazing. I love it, love it, love it. Tonight we are talking about the blood of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to start with the scripture that, let me share my screen here again, if I can. There is a scripture um, in Leviticus 17, and if I can get there, here we go. The life is in the blood, for the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given to you upon the altar to make atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement by reason of the life. And actually, I have it in two different translations. That was maybe a little bit old English for some of you. But the Good News translation says, The life of every living thing is in the blood. And that is why the Lord has commanded that all the blood be poured out on the altar to take away the people's sins. Blood, which is life, takes away sin. Now, in this Bible study, we have been talking about our weapons. We spent the first part of this Bible study talking about how to prepare as far as righteousness and holiness and sanctification and all of those terms. But tonight, we're talking about the third in our arsenal the first weapon that God gave us to use was his word. It was what Jesus used when he was faced in, with the temptation in the wilderness right after he was baptized. Then last week we talked about the name of Jesus and how everything that is named must bow to the name of Jesus. And there's no other name 
which is the reputation. It is, it is who he is. There's no other way to the father except through the son, through the name. And tonight we're looking at the blood. So guys, what does it mean to you when we say that the life is in the blood? What are your thoughts on that? How many of you can stay alive if you have no blood? If you get a bad no. cut, what's the, one, of the, one of the first things you want to do? Stop the flow. Yep. You have, yes. So how do we do that, Jerry? Depends on the severity of the, the injury. If it's, uh, if it's something that requires a tourniquet, then you have to the, the, apply the tourniquet above the, the wound so that you can stop the bleeding. Uh, if it's if it's a uh, chest wound, then you have to do compression to keep the blood from continuing to flow. It just depends on severity. If you cut your finger, uh, you grab a Band-Aid or in some ways a dirty rag. And in, in, in one case, I got cut at the racetrack and had no, and a, in no kind of, uh, of uh, anything to put on it. So a friend of mine put uh, uh, tequila on it to uh, clean the wound before he could bandage it. And so it, it helped make sure that no germs could get into it so that it, uh, so it could heal. Absolutely. So you have, you have named a couple of different ways that the blood is needed in our lives. You talked about you had to clean the wound to keep things out. Most of us know that our life is in the blood, but there is a book by Dr. Brand and Philip Yancey. It's a big, huge, thick book. And in that book, they talk about what the blood actually does in the body, in, in the human body, and why we must not only stop the bleeding because if we lose all of our blood, if we bleed out, if, if we lose all of our blood, our life ebbs away from us as well. So the blood is produced in, within ourselves. So God has made us so amazing that our body is self-sustaining and the blood we know is a cleansing agent that it goes through and it picks up all of the toxins, all of the debris from the cells as it makes its journey through the, the veins and the capillaries of our body. But also as the blood is taking this trek through our body, it is also depositing oxygen, and nutrients to those same cells. It's a twofold process. And God wants us to know that not only does his blood cleanse us from all unrighteousness, as scripture says, but that it is his life-giving force inside of us. And I don't know about you guys, but that encourages me. Sometimes I will, I will just, in my mind, I will just absolutely reach up as if I am grabbing a hold of Jesus. And my great-grandfather was Cherokee Indian. He was full-blown Cherokee. And I grew up on Westerns and, you know, blood brothers where you would cut one another on the wrist and do that. And, of course... In this day and age, it might be a little bit something gross, but we did that a lot, you know, and, and even on some of the uh, sitcom shows and different things. I remember Andy Griffith's show that Opie did it with a friend. And he wanted to do it with his dad because he wanted to be blood brothers. But I think about that and I think about reaching up to Jesus when he's on that cross, that bleeding. And I can just imagine taking his hand and just receiving the life-giving force, his power, his blood, his cleanliness, and taking everything of him in. So we are, are so thankful that God has done that for us. We, we, without the blood of Jesus that washes away our sin, 
our adversary would have more power over us. And Amen. I know last week we kind of ended up talking about Robert Henderson. And I know that the chaplains and I talked about it a little bit afterwards as well of Robert Henderson's revelation of the courts of heaven. And Mike, you, you knew some about that. Yeah. It, Can you uh, share? Well, they, the, uh, we, we give the enemy legal ground when uh, we, we open ourselves up to sin. Uh, you know, it talks about the, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Uh, those are three primary areas where we give away legal ground to the enemy. And when we do that, the enemy comes in as a squatter and takes refuge in our soul. And we are burdened down with a lot of sins that we can't get free of because we have given ground over to the enemy. And in his book, uh, The Courts of Heaven, he talks about how to legally take that back because the devil is a, a legalist and uh, he operates in the legalities where we operate in grace. Uh, and, and there is a difference. Uh, you know, people will, will, people will say, for example, um, I prayed and the Lord doesn't, I would pray to be delivered from smoking, but they continue to go out and buy cigarettes. So <laughs> by, by buying the cigarettes, they have defeated their prayer because they have given the enemy legal ground to keep them addicted. And that's the way it is with sin. You know, if, if pornography is a problem and they keep going down the street where the pornography is, uh, they, they've given up that ground to the enemy and they can't get free of that because the, the enemy has ground in them. Mike, you are so, so, so right. In fact, this week, as I was preparing for this study, uh, I went to Rick Renner. I started mentioning him last week. And Rick was talking about what an adversary is. And he, this is his word or his definition from the Greek New Testament. It is a lawyer who argues in a court of law, a prosecuting attorney, a prosecutor who argues vehemently against the accused, an accuser who attempts to bring a guilty charge against a person on the basis of information from past actions or deeds, an attorney who brings formal charges against the accused based on some legal violation. Now, when I read that, I was pretty amazed. I've heard people joke around saying that the first lawyer was Satan, I, you know, because he is the accuser. But as you were just talking about the courts of heaven and we open a door, we give Satan some legal way. It is the blood when we're standing in that court and the accuser is coming against us. Our plea, our plea to the court is what, Mike? I see you smiling it's already. The blood, the blood of Jesus. We are, we, are guilt, we are guilty of those sins, but the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all unrighteousness. Amen. That, that's our defense. <laughs> and, and that's the only defense. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. Our works do not add up or stand up to what the accuser knows. He knows that it is the blood that takes away sin. It is the blood that takes away sin. So uh, let me go on back here. Hey, Steve Longmire, glad to have you with us. Steve. It's good to have him. And I want to go back yeah. here to a couple of comments before I move on, get back up there. Um, Greg, Craig Garland said that the blood of Jesus will, is as powerful today as it was 2,000 years ago. Amen. Amen. Amen, Craig. That is absolutely true. And Melissa, what did she say? I, Melissa had uh, a comment here. 
uh, and I'm not finding it, Harrison, if you happen to see it or catch it, whatever. And Scott Meehan says, we are given eternal life through the blood of Jesus. I love this. You guys are, are right on it out there. You are very much participators tonight. So let me get back over here again to this comment from uh, Rick Renner. This, this really floored me whenever he was talking about what the adversary does to us. And this is Joe Sanuti's favorite scripture, and it's one that I think most of us know. If we were to quote John 10.10, 10, I think most of us out there could probably do that. For the thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, let me read to you what Rick Renner describes kill as. It's not to kill as in murder, but it means to sacrifice. Have you ever thought about that? Satan is actually offering us as a sacrifice to himself. That makes me mad. It says to surrender or give up something that is precious and dear. Satan loves to wear us down. So Rick Renner goes on and he gives the Rick Renner, the Rick Renner um, version of John 10.10. 10. Now listen to how he says it. The thief wants to get his hands into every good thing in your life. In fact, this pickpocket is looking for any opportunity to wiggle his way so deeply into your personal affairs that he can walk off with everything you hold precious and dear. The goal of this thief is to totally devastate your life. If nothing stops him, he'll leave you insolvent, flat broke, cleaned out in every area of your life. You'll end up feeling as if you're finished and out of business. Make no mistake, the enemy's ultimate aim is to obliterate you. That's the bad part of that verse. But I love the word but because after that comes, but I have come that you may have life and have it abundantly. That means excessively, exceedingly, extraordinary, something that abounds in extraordinary measure, so profuse that it can be likened to a river overflowing. And I don't know about you guys, but we've been having flooding around here. And we've seen the river that exceeded its bounds. And flooding beyond its banks, overflowing plentiful, or even superabundant. So here's the second part, according to Rick Renner. He says, I came that they might, in embra they might embrace an unrivaled, unequaled, matchless, incomparable, richly loaded, overflowing, maximum life. I love that. I love that. But if we don't know how to stop the enemy... If we don't know how to use the word of God, the name of God, the blood of Jesus, plus all of the other things that we talked about earlier as we moved into this section of our study, then Satan wants to stop us from obtaining this kind of life of the super abundant life. So let me ask you, Steve, you jumped in here. I know I sent out the, the messages and all today. Is there something on your heart that you want to share with us? Okay, well, I mean, it kind of seems like um, lately he has been trying to get in the way of several of my ministries, this one included. Um, and he has had me distracted by uh, overabundant busyness, which is a word that's tossed around kind of lightly, but business, busyness is serious business when you have it. Um, and so, uh, I had a unique encounter today where I stopped at a place to get a piece of pipe bent and I've been meaning to do it for four days. But today while I was there, a guy came in, deemed to talk to the owner about alcoholism and he goes, 
well, that's uh, quite a coincidence. The guy you need to talk to is right here. So I sat in the bay of the muffler shop today for an hour talking to a guy, and I thought, you know, the only thing keeping me from moving forward in most of my ministries is me because God reminded me today that he's still in the business of personal ministry. And so uh, I got home this afternoon. I got back to the office as quick as I could, and I said, i got to get plugged back into all of my ministries because I'm currently involved in six ministries plus a church. And, um, and he, so what you said, Renee is absolutely true. Um, he would, he would like to kill my, he would like to get me so busy that I would act like I was doing ministry, but not do it. So I don't know if that makes sense. It's more like a ramble and I'm usually not a rambler, (laughs) but uh, he reminded me today that he has a place for me. And so I, I'm, I'm I'm just happy to be here tonight. I've 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 missed plugging in everywhere. Well, Steve, it's Welcome a pleasure back. to have you. Yes, yeah. we're glad you're here. And, and you're exactly right. I guess you know what the the acronym for busy stands for. Do you know that one? Uh, it's not. I'm not. It's not coming to mind. Being under Satan's yoke. Yeah. Ouch. <laughs> God, God hit me upside the head with that one a few years ago, Steve. So I, I feel your pain. But that's what he does is that he is he's so deceptive. But what we're talking about tonight, let me make sure um, I get Craig's comment up here. He said, for, you know, that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. And it was not paid with mere gold or silver which lose their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless lamb. And that's what we're talking about. Thank you, Craig. Craig's his own ministry. You know, many of you know him from being the lead chaplain with RFC at the national events for many years. And we thank God that he's here with us on the Facebook live. And we just pray blessings over him. So Satan is... It, one of that word destroy, I didn't do that one. I forgot to do that one. But Rick Renner says that that word destroy that Satan does to us, maybe this is kind of how you're feeling, Steve. I know I've been there the last couple of days. It has been a hard week. But it says that Satan wants to crush us. He wants to pulverize us. And then he's going to take all of the physical things of us and mis- mix it with the fluids so that whenever he comes to destroy us, that Greek word actually means to slurp up. Now you think about a human being that you can slurp up. That's a different connotation of the evilness that our adversary is. And I have to be honest with each and every one of you I've, I've not considered the depth of his evil. I have dismissed it. I guess growing up in the age where the devil made me do it with um, oh, Flip Wilson. We all mm-hmm. learned to, to laugh at the devil. Oh, the devil made me do it. And we, it was just a comedy. We made him a joke and did not take him serious. And that's one of the ways he comes at us is if he can disarm us. And I think that's pretty much what he did to me in so many different ways. But then also we have a picture of the devil in a red suit with a tail, horns, and a pitchfork. Who really takes somebody like that serious? But God is wanting us to understand that our adversary is dragging us into the courts of heaven. I'm going to share another story with you from Robert Henderson. Because this one really, really, really hit me. Last week I shared the story of how God introduced him to the courts of heaven. But then later he said, so many people think, well, I haven't done anything I don't need to go to the courts of heaven. I know Satan accuses me, but Jesus is going to take care of it. So let me explain to you 
what Robert Henderson said about the courts of heaven and our adversary. His mother died. Robert Henderson's mother passed away and left him a home. It was in the will. Everything was legal. But somebody decided they wanted that house for whatever reason. And even though they did not have legal right to it, they went to the court and filed a case against Robert. And even though he had the will, she had left it to him, he had to get a lawyer, he had to spend his money, he had to defend himself in the court system to prove his right to what was rightfully his. It doesn't make sense to us, does it? But this is the way evil works. So until he went into the court and got that case dropped, he could not legally take possession of the home his mother left to him. Now here's where God used that to teach him about the courts of heaven. We think that Jesus as our savior, that when we have the blood of Jesus on us, and when we have God as our father, and he's also the righteous judge, that we're okay. But what is stopping so many people and keeping them from moving forward into the things that God wants to give us is that Satan has filed an, a case against us. He doesn't have right to what God wants to give us. But because he has gone into the court system of heaven and filed a case, the property, the promises, the things of God that God himself as our father wants us to have and that Jesus as our savior and brother has died for us to possess until we answer and defend ourselves against this case by going to the court and pleading the blood of Jesus and presenting the word of Jesus as we talked about two weeks ago. Satan holds up delivery of those promises. If you go to the book of Daniel, this is some of what Robert Henderson references when Daniel prayed and immediately the angels were dispatched, but Satan fought in the heavenlies and it was three weeks later before the answer to the prayer came. Mike, have you heard of this? Have you heard of that part of, of his testimony? Yeah, I, I think uh, he has some very powerful teaching. And I, you know, I would encourage people who haven't heard of, of him to, to look into his teaching. Uh, because I think that's, it's something that we as Christians have missed out on of why the enemy has uh, held, us, held our promises up and held our destiny up. Uh, because we of the legal rights that we have given over and, and not taken back. I agree with you, Mike. I agree with that. And this was news to me. But what we're trying to do tonight is to educate you. Mm -hmm. Because we want you to glorify God by doing everything and possessing everything that Jesus Christ died for us to do and to have. So this is where this teaching comes in. I would pray that you could get this. Uh, Jerry and, and Steve, Robert's down there in your state. He could be 12 hours from you, but he's, Robert's down there in Texas. And, and I, I love watching him. I know he's been here in the Carolinas a few times. But yes, his teaching is very, very, very powerful. So what we need to know is when we come into the court of heaven or when we have to 
answer the charges against us. And I know that Mike and I have talked about you can't take on the Satan in an area where God has not given you authority. We've we covered that the last couple of times. But what we need to know, according to Derek Prince, is we need to be able to uh, let me see if I can get it here. Um, we have to tell the devil what the word says that Jesus paid for. We have to be able to speak to the devil just like Jesus did in the wilderness. We have to be able to share our testimony of what the word says that the blood does for us. In fact, um, Mike, I saw you shaking your head again. I, I've lost yeah. my scripture here. Revelation. Revelation. Yeah, <laughs> Revelation. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Absolutely. So here are some scriptures. I didn't have time to get them all into the PowerPoint. So I know that I sent them out to some of the chaplains, but I'm going to just share some of these. And if you guys have comments or want to expand on it, uh, please do so. Ephesians 1, 7 and 8, it says, In him we have redemption through the blood. You see, Jesus redeemed us by his blood. The forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. So the first thing that we, we need to know is that we have redemption. What does that word redemption mean, guys? What's your, your version of it? We've been redeemed. We've been claimed back from, from something, which is sin or sin, sin life. I would say just the essence of the gospel, really. I mean, redemption is, is Jesus' story you know, for us and uh, redemption from uh, an eternal life in sin an eternal life in, in death. Um, I think the word redemption is more powerful than we grant it sometimes. Amen. Well, rescue comes to mind uh, with me because I think about when I was redeemed from uh, my old life, my old address, when I got a new address, I was rescued from where I used to live. Uh, so I think uh, when, he, when he paid the price, he paid the price by rescuing me. So, uh, you know, I didn't have to live there. Uh, it was like somebody was here a while back was talking about dragging up my past. And, uh, you know, and, I, and the comment was, well, that's like going to a house I used to live in. It's empty. Yeah. And uh, I don't live there anymore. So if you want, you need to come to my new address. And so I think being rescued uh, always comes to mind for redemption with me. Amen. Amen. That's powerful, Steve, and you're, and you're exactly right. So all of y'all are, are, are you're there. Harrison's talking about, uh, Mike said redeemed, and Harrison said the plan of Jesus. It means to go back to the original intent. In fact, if we use just the root of that word to be deemed, deemed worthy, deemed right, uh, mm -hmm. you're seen in a specific way, and redeemed, means to be taken back, to do again. So God has redeemed us, and we were sinners who have been saved and redeemed by the blood, and now we are set up as God's chosen. Oh, wow. How awesome is that? How <laughs> awesome is that? All right, let's go on to... looking for us. I'm sorry, Jerry, what? He came looking for us. Yeah. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. All right. Um, Ephesians uh, 17 says that the blood of Jesus, I'm not quoting uh, verbatim, but it says the blood of Jesus has redeemed us out of the hand of the devil and through the blood of Jesus. I must, oh, that's what it was. We just read that one. Let's move on to 1 John 1 verse 7. But if we really walk in the light, that is, live in an every day in conformity with the precepts of God as he himself is in the light. We have true unbroken fellowship 
with one another. He is with us and we with him. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. By erasing the stain of sin, keeping us cleansed from sin in all its forms and manifestations. That's the Amplified. I love that, that he keeps us clean, cleansed. He, and and continue, it's a continual process. I don't know about you, but every day I have to mm-hmm. look at that. Uh, whatever is going on in life, something that comes after us. And we have to always continue to apply the blood. I don't need the blood in my body every day. I need it every minute. And I think that that's what we need with with Jesus, that we get the mindset that his blood is continual cleansing. You know, I don't think about the blood in my body every day, but I'm glad it's there working. I'm glad that it doesn't stop until I do think about it. So we can compare the blood of Jesus to that. But I know that God wants us to, to keep an account so that Satan doesn't build up a case against us all right let's go to romans 5 9 and this out this is out of the young's literal translation much more that's a good way to start a voice a verse much more than having been declared righteous now in his blood we shall be saved through him from the wrath we've been declared righteous we're cleansed we're redeemed and now we're declared righteous Mm -hmm. we didn't have to earn it we didn't have to work for it It's it's a very you know the blood of jesus is such a vital subject that we don't spend i don't think enough time talking about and you know according to the jewish translate uh year year last Saturday evening started Passover. And, you know, we we tend to celebrate Good Friday as a Passover. But according to the Jewish calendar, it started, it was Saturday through Sunday. And then it, which started the festival uh, of first fruits. And uh, that, that lasts for a week. It's one of the spring festivals on the calendar. And Jesus was the first fruits from the dead. Uh, the Orthodox Jews just don't realize that Jesus fulfilled that feast. So, you know, as we think about Good Friday and Passover and the blood of the lamb being applied to the doorposts uh, in Egypt, you know, we need to apply those blood, the blood of the lamb to the doorposts of our heart. And that's the very thing we're talking about that the angel of death passes over because of the blood of Jesus applied to our heart. Mike, that's a beautiful picture. And I'm glad you brought that up because that was in the notes about the blood of Jesus, that this is where we first saw the the death angel did pass over. It was in Egypt when the death angel at that particular time took the firstborn life of every male, whether it was human or animal. And God wants to, he was showing us that that's a picture of him. But we do have to put it over each side of the doorpost as well as the header or the lintel. But one thing that I'm not sure which one of the teachers I was listening to was talking about, said you never put it on the threshold because the blood is never been, never to be trampled underfoot. Isn't that amazing? Mm. So we, we put it on either side and overhead. We come under it. One thing I heard someone say many years ago as they were talking about the Passover and they would take hyssop branches and they would smear it. This was, this was actually kind of a gross thing, but it was what they had to do. You can't have a neatly packaged Christianity. God likes to get into the messy places of our life. Steve, you've got a good testimony about that. We've, we've heard Jerry's about that. And, and he likes to get into the messy places. But anyway, this preacher went on to say 
that even if you sacrifice the lamb that particular night, and even if you put the blood over the, the doorpost and on either side of the door frame, when it was time for the death angel to come through, you had to be in the house. If you were outside in the streets, mm -hmm. you were not covered. You were not under the blood. I see heads nodding. What do you guys got to say about that? Disagree. Right. <laughs> so that's what we <clears throat> want you to know. Mike is forever, forever telling us it's not a religion. It's not a system. It's a relationship. You have to be in the Father's house. You have to be inside. I mean, you could have stood on the back outside and applied the blood, but if you're not inside, then there was no covering. The death angel, you were on the side where the death angel was. And that's what God wants us to understand and to know. But I think there's also something else. And I think I might have touched on this last week. Um, but I'm going to ask the guys if there's anything they want to mention or close or say about the blood uh, before we, maybe we should talk about the seven places that Jesus shed his blood. Let me see. I think I've got a, a, I think I've got a slide for that. Let me go back up here. Here we go. So there were seven places that this week we will, some of us will with our churches or whatever, we will talk about the seven different places that Jesus shed his blood. And the first one was when he went to the garden to pray for us, that he prayed until such his sweat was, he sweated great drops of blood. And this was for our peace, our peace of mind. I don't know if you've ever been so frustrated, so upset, but that you needed peace. But this is where you can plead the blood of Gethsemane for your peace of mind. The high priest struck him on his face. Uh, this was whenever he went into the court of Pilate. Then they put the crown of thorns on his head. Uh, the... Again, this goes back to the redemption. And, and you guys jump in here and help me. Um, it mm -hmm. goes back to the redemption of being crowned with life and crowned by God. They plucked out his beard. And then, of course, we know that whenever he was, um, not only did they uh, pluck out his beard, but then after that, they scourged him with a, a cat of nine tails. He took 39 lashes. And I believe in the book, and I think this is where I got this from, but in his book about the blood by uh, Dr. Brand and Philip Yancey, it talks about there are 39 root causes for every disease known to mankind. And, and scripture says that by his stripes, you were healed. It's a past tense thing. I think that's amazing. And then, of course, the crown of thorns. I got out of order there because it goes across. But it's the crown of thorns. Uh, then it was the hands and his feet so that the work of our hands and the places that we place our feet should bring the peace of God back to it. And then the spear in his side, it says... Uh, that we are born by blood and the water. Let me see if I can find that scripture. Um, like I said, I've got too many of them here. But in Ephesians 5.25, it talks about blood and water. You've been washed with the water. Wait a minute, here it is. First John 5, 6 and 8. Who then overcomes the world? Only he who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. And it is the spirit who testifies to this because the spirit is the truth. For these are the three that testify, the spirit, the water, and the blood, 
and these three are in agreement. So this is the, the places that this week, as we looked at Holy Week, and, and it all started with that Passover. And we've, we don't follow that as closely because we changed some things throughout history. But the Passover and these three spring festivals that are being completed here, those are appointed days by God. And he wants us to make much of the blood. Billy Brim says that in the old days, the old, olden people, the older folks, and that might mean most of us on here tonight, I guess we could exempt Steve and, and Harrison, but the, the older generations used to make much of the blood. And we've, we've taken away so much of that in our, in our hymns and in our worship because we don't want to offend people. But if we don't stand up for the blood and stand for the blood, then Satan's going to slurp us up. And I'm glad that Steve is, is making that push back. And I'm, I'm glad to know that we are gaining. There's more of you out there talking tonight and participating in this Bible study. But any, any last comments before I go one more place, guys? And then I want all of us to come together. Uh, we right. usually... Oh. I try to tell some of the guys that we're working with, I'm in a mighty man of God Bible study with um, a lot of guys who are new to the Bible. And uh, when we get to this time of year and we get to the Passover meal and, and the guy says, well, you know, why is the, why is the blood? Why does Jesus call it the new covenant? And uh, so I tell them, I said, well, in layman's terms, we really fouled the old covenant up pretty bad. And so it's nice to know it's comforting to know that he was willing to to create this new covenant with us before he before he left. And though we tell these guys that are entering into this covenant for the first time that that was the reason that he shed that blood was because he knew that some 2,021 years later, you were going to be looking for a covenant of peace to get away from the sin, the drugs, everything that's going on, all the stuff coming out of prison, and that that covenant is sealed with his blood. And so we preach that, you know, quite a bit. And um, I think about all the times in my life when I have, when I fouled up that covenant, um, even, even being a Christian and knowing it, when I fouled it up, it may have been judgmental or, or uh, you know, especially judgmental or angry, which are the two areas that I was struggling in. I think about him holding that cup and saying, hey, this is a new cup. And so I want you to return to that. So I, I, I I think that you're right. We don't preach the blood enough, um, and um, I, I think I'm glad we're talking about it tonight. I really I needed to hear it. I needed to be reminded of that. Something about the blood. I think we we hear the word and and we take it kind of lightly, but the blood was sacred. In whenever the high priest entered into the holiest of holies. He was the one and only that could enter into it. And Jesus is the one and only that could shed it to offer us that new covenant. And I think in many areas of, of satanic worship, the blood is used and, and it's diluted its purpose and its meaning in the Christian life because it's taken for granted and that we don't always understand what really transpires when that blood is shed and for what reason it was shed. Amen. Amen. And you're exactly, you're, you're both exactly right. We need to know how to respect the sacredness of the blood, not take it flippantly. We need to, to consider what Jesus Christ has done for us. I just put in the comments here a prayer that I want to repeat, but I want you guys to be able to have this because this is a prayer that Derek Prince has used to bring deliverance and freedom 
and affirmation. This is something that the Holy Spirit prompted him to put together through his years of working all across the world to bring freedom to so many people. And this, this is the prayer. Through the blood of Jesus, I am redeemed out of the hand of the devil. Through the blood of Jesus, all my sins are forgiven. The blood of Jesus cleanses me continually from all sin. Through the blood of Jesus, I am justified, made righteous, just as if I'd never sinned. Through the blood of Jesus, I am sanctified, made holy, set apart to God. My body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, redeemed, cleansed, sanctified by the blood of Jesus. Therefore, Satan has no place in me, no power over me through the blood of Jesus. I renounce him. I loose myself from him and I command him to leave me in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And Derek Prince says, now it's time to praise the Lord. You see, I put that prayer there because I want you, not only is it a prayer, it's a, it's a decree. You are telling Satan what the word says, the blood does for you. And that's what we want you to know. When your guilt, when, when guilt comes against you, God never gives you guilt. Romans, Paul wrote, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. So if, if you're being attacked by guilt, no, that's an, a weapon of the enemy. He's trying to get you to give up what Jesus Christ died for you to have. And I am, I am about building up the body of Christ and about you walking in everything, not partially, but in everything that Jesus Christ died for you to have. I want you to have that super abundantly, more than enough, overflowing life. And I want us in having that. It's not about us. It's about us walking differently than the rest of the world and glorifying God. That's what it's all amen. about. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 And that's why we're here. We want you to take this journey with us. We're on our way. We're not there yet. Like Paul said, I have not yet arrived. I've not yet finished my course, but we're further than we have been. And we are so glad that each and every one of you are taking this journey with us. We, we, I, we are just, wow. I'm just fired up now because of, of all of this and talking about the blood. So I want to thank you again. I want to thank uh, Jerry Blazier and Mike Imhoff and uh, again Harrison I'm so glad that he's going to be with us from now and Steve welcome back brother I am so glad to have you here with us and part of this and I'm going to ask you to close us in prayer amen <clears throat> dear heavenly father I'm reminded at this time of the year that um, you washed their feet before they betrayed you Father God, that you went above and beyond and showed us more love than we'd ever known before we betrayed you, before we let you down, Father God, so that we would understand that when you left, that when you came back, you would come back in love. And Father God, as we approach the darkest day on the calendar for any Christian, Lord, we know that, that Sunday's coming. We know that on Sunday morning, the stone will be rolled away and the tomb will be empty, just like the cavernous places where we keep our sins. They'll be empty. There'll be nothing left in there. We won't owe anything, Father God. It'll all be free. It'll all be forgiven. Father God, I thank you that you thought enough of us, Father God, to wash our feet before we sinned and that you would gladly wash them again, Father God, because you love us that much. Dear God, I pray tonight for all of those that don't know you. I pray that this week, Father God, that maybe this holiest of weeks, that maybe someone can, can get in their path, can, can fall in their way, that can show them Father God, to what an empty tomb looks like, what an empty box full of sin looks like, what an empty uh, part of our lives full of shame and guilt looks like when you come in and you empty it out and you take it away 
and you lead us into that freedom, Father God. Thank you, Lord, for breathing that last breath, for dripping that blood, Father God, for dying on that cross for my sins. And, Lord, I just pray tonight that everybody on this this uh, group meeting here, Father God, understands and loves you as much as I do, Lord, for the sacrifices you made and for the freedom that you have bestowed. It's in your name I pray. Amen. 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 Well, guys, I thank you all so, so very much. Let me see what people are saying here. I hope that you will come back and catch this prayer that we put in the comments tonight. And we pray that you celebrate the greatest event that made us who we are, that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that God gave, that this week we remember that he laid down his life. No one took it. No one is to blame. He did it all on his own to redeem, sanctify, cleanse, and make us his bride, his church here in this world. Thank you, guys. Thanks uh, again to all of these here tonight joining us. And we look forward to seeing you again next Tuesday night where we will continue preparing you to walk in victory. And we hope that you will join us this Sunday at 4 p.m. At, for our Godspeed ministry service right here on Facebook. Godspeed, everyone. Thank you for being part of this tonight.